human evolution is about measuring and tracking results and judging their value. So why do we need something called indicators? Well, monitoring works best if it is kept simple and meaningful. Unnecessary complexity should be avoided. For any program, policy or service, there is an unlimited number of possible measurements we can take. And a common fallacy is to measure something because it can be measured. This typically leads to information overload. Selecting a few indicators out of all that data we collect or can collect forces us to carefully think through and agree on the most important measurements for our purpose. Indicators help us to reduce a large amount of information to few strategic key elements while retaining the essential information needed to make decisions. That is why probably the most difficult decision in the process of setting up a monetary system is to decide which indicators to use, but particularly what not to measure. Indicators help us doing that. Indicators are objectively verifiable and repeatable measures. Anybody should be able to agree on the value of an indicator at all times. Let's take a look at an example of an indicator. While there is no single standard how an indicator should be written down, this example shows an effective and concise way to do that. We see that this indicator consists of six elements. A description of the indicator, the number of print media reports on gender-based violence per month. An indicator baseline and the date this data was collected. The baseline is the status of the indicator at the beginning of a program or project and acts as a reference point against which progress or achievements can be assessed. Further, an indicator target. This is the desired status of the indicator at a defined time in the future. The source describes where the data for the indicator is coming from. The source is sometimes also called means of verification. The frequency defines how often the status for the indicator is updated over time. And responsibility refers to who is in charge of collecting the indicator data, if it is primary data, or who will retrieve the data in case of secondary data. A complete indicator must include at least these six elements. Let's look at some examples of different indicators and discuss their characteristics. Here is the first indicator. This is a standard indicator looking at the share of customers that are either very satisfied or satisfied after using a public service. In this case, we assume that somebody already compiles and analyzes feedback on a regular basis. It is important to ensure that the categories very satisfied and satisfied are included in feedback forms. Alternatively, we could also simply use the percentage of customers that are very satisfied. That will depend on the context of what we want to know. This indicator makes use of secondary data as well. An established index regularly published by the World Bank. In this case, we use the ranking of a country in the index, which gives us an understanding how the country is evolving relative to other countries. Alternatively, we could also use the score rather than the rank, which may show us a completely different trend over time. 
This indicator even gives us the website where we can find data for this index. It is good practice to be as concrete as possible when describing sources. It helps other people to verify our data and makes the indicator more credible. As you see, this is a qualitative indicator using words rather than numbers. In this case, no and yes. Qualitative indicators are not as common because they are somewhat insensitive to change. In this case, the indicator only captures two conditions, not set up or set up. It does not capture all the preparatory work towards setting up a human rights commission or how well it functions. This indicator uses a scale from 0 to 10 to measure the extent that policies are in line with global standards. It is important to make this indicator as objective as possible. To do that, we use a checklist and an expert group that is, to the extent possible, independent of the policy that we want to track.